my speakers. Hey, I think we're here. We're but here. We have a complicated setup. <laughs> this is Katie. Those of you that are here, we welcome. And if you can hear us, if you'll type in the chat box, hey, we hear you, that'd be great. And if you hear us loud enough, sometimes it's not quite high enough volume. Okay, good. Thumbs up. We're getting the thumbs up. Okay, I just need to make sure I've got the right controls. La la la. Oh, man. All right. I just want everyone to know that if something technical happens, it's not going to surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be my fault. <laughs> It'll be your fault. Carol's here with me. This is Katie Snap, and my my straight man today is is Carol White, uh, my partner, my business partner, not my life partner. Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with that, but Carol is uh, helpful here in the studio because she can get things kind of smoothed out. But there, it doesn't. It just never fails to amaze me how there's always something that's just unexpected. Um, but right now, everything's feeling pretty darn smooth. I am uh, motivated by being hosted by the Femfessionals. Um, I want to thank you all. And um, boy, there's so much to cover. I, I better just get going because there's a lot to cover. Um, please know that if you're listening just on audio, that's perfectly fine. And we'll describe enough. If there's something that's showing up on the screen, we'll give you a, a verbal um description enough so that you're not missing out on anything. But it is helpful for those of you that are here and ready to get into it to find this as your time. Set aside, this is development time for you. See that it's applica applicable to what you find in your life is needing. Um, you're at the right place. It, you know, women, women that sign up for self, um, I'll call them self-improvement, but it's really a, increasing your awareness around where you are professionally, especially as a woman. We're, we're preaching to the choir. You all are the ones that are self-starters, and we love having you here. And this is one of those areas of your life that you will work on for the rest of your life. So, okay, I'm going to try this. Here we go. That's me, Katie Snap. Um, we'll have a picture of Carol here in just a minute, but you're going to hear mostly from me. And, and I am from a company called Skirt Strategies. Carol and I have built it. It's an online resource for women, training and, and encouragement for women in leadership. We use the byline tiny trainings and big results. We know you don't have a lot of time for training. And so we give it in small, manageable pieces. This is one of them, but I, you might feel a little bit fire hosed with this. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully not. But what we've got for you today with your powerful professional image includes a, a lot of tips. We're going to talk about three areas. We're going to give you techniques. We're going to give you some some tips. Uh, we're going to give you some guidelines. And you'll be able to walk away implementing some of those right away. So hopefully you have some paper in front of you and you're ready to take some notes. We're putting it in the form of three secrets. And these are secrets that confident women know. It, it amazes me that some women can go through life just without looking flustered and they come off as very uh, refined. They have grace. They show composure. What is it that those women know? It's not rocket science, ladies. It is something that is completely learnable. And this is coming from a rocket scientist. I, I am a rocket scientist. So I actually would be very comfortable with it if it were rocket science. But it's, it's so basic. It's fundamental stuff that you can build upon. It just takes reinforcement, reminding, and practice. And we're going to help you with that. So if you're feeling like some of your days look like, like this, um, maybe many of your days, you're frustrated, are you misunderstood, uh, are you not being taken seriously at work? This happens a lot with women. They're just rolled over. Do you feel like you might not be valued for what you contribute? Uh, maybe, you, maybe none of those apply, but you want a promotion and you're not sure where to start, or you just want to get better. Or you have, I'll date myself, do you have iron poor blood? <laughs> We're going to send out some pills to you to make you better. Well, if you want to stay till the end, Carol and I will give away a copy of our book, Skirt Strategies. And that is um, 
something that we'll be referring to here and there because it has 249 success tips in it. A lot of those are great reminders. They are in Tiny Trainings Big Results format. So we're going to refer to some of those here and there. And we wanted to just kind of tie up the the end of this session with um, a, a giveaway for that. So stay tuned for that. Um, what you're going to learn from us today, we're, we're going to look at these three areas. This is the be all to end all reminder for you as a composed woman in leadership. What's your physical re- re- presentation? What's your verbal presentation? And what is your written presentation? There's a little bit of overlap in some of those, but they are the foundation of how you're seen by others. This is it in action. Carol and I used to look like this. Actually, we look kind of good there. And after today, this is what you'll look like. (laughs) I love that picture. And when we posed for that, we didn't even have that picture on the left in mind. (laughs) Um, a woman that has in her head what she wants to do and how she wants to do it will make it happen. So some of our um, some of our followers we've been we've been um, marketed in a lot of different areas. We've been broadcasting some of these. I just wanted to give you some insight that uh, you're dealing with two experts. Carol and I are very comfortable with this. We know what we're talking about. We certainly don't know what it's like in your life in your working world. Um, that's part of the application that we do challenge you with today. Listen for what works for you, and we encourage you to take on some of these um, quick techniques, something that you can walk away with immediately. So let's talk first about the first of those secrets, your physical presentation or representation. So your physical presentation is how you're seen by others. I want to ask you a question. Your brand is who you are, right? Your brand is who you are. So as you're listening to that question, you can you can answer if you would like, yes or no, or maybe, or here's what I think. Go ahead and use the chat box if you would like. We think of ourselves in one way, and we're often perceived in another way. Now, How we see ourselves is certainly very important, right? Says something about our authenticity and where our genuineness comes from. But perhaps what's more important is the image that we're portraying. What others think about when they think about you is what you want to drill down into. And guess what the key is to finding that out? You're going to have to ask. You're going to have to ask others. You need to get feedback. You need to look for cues in the way someone's treating you. We're all very good at that. Women have great undercurrents and, you know, sensing undercurrents in others. But what they think and what you can do about it is important to know. Okay, it is that simple. The way you present yourself physically is the most and perhaps the most important impression that you make. We, We know it's the... The first impression is is one of the most important. But what if their first impression is written? Well, we're going to talk about that too. Sure. What if it's um, they hear you on the phone or they hear you on the webinar like you and I today, Carol? This is their first, imp- many of them, this is their first impression of us. The physical is an important one as well. And it's something that can come off either the way that you want it or the way that you don't want it or the way that you don't want it and you don't know it. That would stink. So we're going to give you two techniques and we're going to give you some appearance tips in this first one. An uh, an understood caveat here, Kara and I are not fashion experts, (laughs) although many, many people do look up to us. (laughs) They look up to me. Yeah. (laughs) Carol's a tall one. Um, We're not going to be talking about fashion. We will give you some tips for how to look for where you are fashionably. We're not going to be giving you fashion tips. I know that sounds like it would be fun to talk about shoes all day, but let's not do that. That's another webinar. That would be a whole webinar. <laughs> we have Jimmy Chu as a special guest. Here's a quote from Mother Teresa. Honesty and transparency make you vulnerable. Be honest and transparent anyway. Vulnerability is one of the key assets that leads to people respecting and Uh, more importantly, trusting you. Right. How many times have you been in a situation where you feel vulnerable at work? 
what if you were in a situation where you felt like you weren't your true self and you were hiding something? You wanted to say what you were really thinking. For example, <clears throat> many women will take the time to ask others what's going on. You know, what do you all think? Sometimes we hold back and we don't do that because we think, oh, that's too squishy or that's too soft. That's not being your authentic self. For those of you that know you're that way, we have an, a free online assessment if you want to take a look at what your leadership type is and how you do influence. It's at skirtstrategies.com forward slash assessment, forward slash assessment. And it looks at 16 natural female leadership traits and where you are. You'll get a quick assessment of yourself, where you are in that. <clears throat> then it'll give you a one page report. You will be dropped into our email list, but don't go now. But don't go now. We don't want to lose Stay you. Here. Just remember assessment. I'll, we'll remind you that at the end of at the end of the um, the session. Your authentic self, being true to yourself and being real, that's where you come from. When you are real, your true self, it starts to show. When you, when you decide what your physical representation is, it sends a message as to what really, who really is behind that. And if you're dressing in some way that I don't know, here I am talking about fashion, but if you're dressing in some way that's really not you, will it really fit you? What's the difference between being yourself and natural and looking professional? You've got to be able to find something that looks for you, that, that something that feels good on you that gives you that sense of this is who I am and this is the professional person, not only that I want to be, but I'm on the path to be. You can absolutely do that. So um, this confidence head game, we, we use a book sometimes in uh, some of our trainings. We talk about charisma and how women have natural charisma. There's a book called The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. Um, we've done, uh, actually, if you like that, uh, the concept of where you are as a charismatic leader and how it can increase your confidence, which will increase in turn your physical presence, not just what you're wearing, but what looks confident about you. Uh, take a look at our podcast on charisma. Here's what Olivia says. Assuming a strong, confident physical posture will make you feel more confident and more powerful. As you feel more powerful, your body language adapts accordingly. This in turn gives you yet another biochemical boost and the cycle builds upon itself. All you have to do is get the cycle going. And if you keep practicing, confident body language will become second nature. Love that. I remind myself that how I'm carrying myself physically is really important. For those of you that are connected physically to your iPhone or your smartphone, you might be getting what we call text neck. <laughs> text neck. And I'm, you know, I'm worried about it because my mom has a dowager's hump and I feel like that's really contributing to it is the time that I spend texting Think about what your posture looks like at any given moment. Right now, what's your posture look like? Are your shoulders up and back? Is your is your chin high? Are you drooping down? If I see someone sitting a little bit slouched at their desk, I might think, well, they're really concentrating on something. But it sends a slight message of where's the pride in the way that they're sitting? What does your posture say about you? I'm going to give you... Um, Two immediate techniques for your posture. The first one, it's called the anchoring technique. Boing. The anchoring technique. Think of a time when you were super successful. Maybe it was a project. Maybe it was an interaction. Maybe it was an interview. Something went really well. As you walked away from that situation, you felt powerful. You felt strong. You said to yourself, that's the way I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I love it. That's the way you want things to be all the time. We have those ups. Now, the anchoring technique begins with recalling a situation when that positive success happened for you. And then describing it mentally, you can write it down as well. What was the situation about? Kind of draw a picture of it mentally. Bring in the five senses. What did you feel like? What did you 
look like? What did it sound like? Was there a taste involved? Was there a smell involved? As many as you can and relive those mentally. Now, our mind is an interesting thing. It can be programmed. When we relive something, we let go some hormones that actually create the sensation that we had at the same time. And our body responds. And that positivity that occurred when you were anchoring, that that positivity that occurred at that time, you can anchor yourself to it. I know a lot of you are chatting and talking about this. We love it. Keep going. Um, The anchoring technique means using a present day situation and finding a historical situation to anchor to, to anchor to. Now, Katie, I'm just realizing that folks are not seeing the visuals here. So um, apologies. You didn't want to be on this one, Carol. Remember when I said when we started, it would be amazing if something technical didn't happen. And I, I don't know why the... The visual's not showing? All right, we're going to take just a... No, it, it's showing. It's showing. All right, I'm guessing you all see, so we know you hear us. Do you see the anchor? Yes. So is, are you all seeing, are, are you all hearing us? Uh, seeing us, I'm sorry. Got it, Carol? Yes. Now, when something like this happens, here's what you do. You take a deep breath and you tell yourself, it's okay, we're composed and we've got our crap together yeah because this this is a great um it's a great slide deck it's okay if you haven't been tracking along everything because i've been saying everything anyway i'm waiting for the thumbs up from you carol um can you all oh good you can see yes they can see so sorry (laughs) it's it's all happening now and and I can see you all adding text, and it's right out of my vision. So um, Carol is helping me translate. Okay, apologies. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So we're 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 about midway through that anchoring technique. So so we've got you set up to where a situation that worked well for you, and you've described it mentally, and you've put yourself present day into that. That, that mental situation, your body will respond in such a way that you will, you will be reinforced. You actually will start to sen- feel the sense of, <clears throat> you know, what's happening is I feel a little bit better because I know that I've done it before in the past. Remembering success will bring you future success. I define confidence as the memory of success because of this technique in particular. Confidence is the memory of success. And this anchoring technique gets that for you. Next time you have a tough situation or you're walking into something, listen to what you're telling yourself and identify a time where it's positive. Switch it around to something that's positive by using this anchoring technique. Here's a second technique. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. It's called the peacock technique. When you're about to go into a situation, it's working now, Carol. When you're about to go into a situation that um, you're questioning your confidence or you're questioning your, your professional composure, I want you to stand outside of it, even if it's outside of a room, which is perfect, or mentally outside of it before you actually enter into it. So let's say I'm getting ready to go into a boardroom with a bunch of key people that are listening to an idea that I'm selling, something I'm something that they will be in my mind scrutinizing me for. The peacock technique reminds us up front. Think of yourself as a peacock. I know, I know the beautiful peacock is the male, but we're going to give male men the credit on this one. We're just going to pretend that women have the beautiful picture. We're showing a peacock with the beautiful colors right now. Outside of that room, actually stand up, make yourself big. Pull your shoulders back. Think of yourself as a large entity. Now, I'm 4'11", mm-hmm. <laughs> and I ain't getting any taller. <laughs> I had a client say to me, this was a leadership team at a 
bank that I had done some training with. And we did a series of training. And one of the um, C-level men that I coached afterwards had said to me, this was a huge compliment for me. He said, it, and and by the way, I have to tell you, this guy is 6'4 or 6'5, wow. large guy, but a rather meek personality. And he said, you know, Katie, I really want to work on making myself bigger. And I thought, my God, you've got like all the height in the world. I'd love that. And he said, but but I just don't feel like I do it. I don't feel like I'm making that professional presence. Like he said, like you do. He said, you walk into a room and you seem to command it. And I said, well, that's a huge compliment. And let me just tell you, there's no trick to that. It has to do with feeling confident and knowing that this room is my space. And I think about the audience and I don't think about fear. I don't think about wonder what they're thinking of me. I think about them sitting there being supportive of me. And I think of yes running through their mind, not knowing what she's doing here. And that makes a huge difference. Peacock technique can help you in that way. Just stand stand tall before you walk into a situation and know. Now, a, a small comment about dress for success. Carol calls it dressing for successing. Dress for the position to which you aspire. This is the, the first reference to the book because one of the tips, tip number 26, is about um, not just your posture. Look at the mirror. Look at your hair. Your style. Is it well cut? What about your wardrobe? Is it appropriate? Um, what do you need to look put together and complete? That doesn't mean you have to have the most expensive outfit. It doesn't mean you have to be fashionable. It just means you have to look put together. Someone that can pull themselves together looks like they've got their act together. It's it's that simple. When I was an engineer, I thought I had to wear a black, a blue, or a brown blazer with everything I wore. <laughs> this was... 19 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it was back in the 1900s. <laughs> and that's what I did to justify my credibility. Now, I wouldn't say go in in sweatpants and think, well, you know, I know my stuff and therefore they should listen to me. I don't have to be, you know, it's not about the outfit. But I run into, especially in technical industries, I run into a lot of women that don't look a little bit put together because it's supposed to be about the brain, Right. I'm sorry, it's not that way. It's I, It should be, but you're running an uphill battle if you think you can't get away with at least looking a little bit finished. So just just think about being finished, right? No judgment on what someone looks like style-wise and whether um, you know your, your hairstyle is the most up-to-date. If it just looks like it's put together, that's fine. If you don't know, there's some things you can do. You can ask a friend, you can ask a mentor, you can ask a man that you trust, Um Sometimes that's the way to get the most blunt feedback from someone or the most honest feedback from someone. Okay. I'm going to go, Carol. I'm going to hit this. Here we go. Okay. You can ask them the question, what do you think of my physical presentation? You can ask them, how do I present myself professionally? And it doesn't need to sound like something that's disarming to them. It's simply, hey, you know, do you think I do a pretty good job? Do you think I do a pretty good job? You know, sometimes I throw myself together. Do you think people notice that? I throw myself together sometimes. It's something I have to be aware of. Or what can I do to be more impactful? What do you think I can do? If you have a nice, honest, open conversation with someone that you feel comfortable with, you can get feedback in that way. Some other tips that are in the book. Uh, Tip number 23 mentions dress smart and professional, never sexy. When you dress a little bit sexy, it suddenly becomes about you trying to look sexy instead of looking professional. Don't even go there. Watch the neckline, watch the level of the skirt. You want to be looked at as a professional, not as someone that's trying to get the attention because of your physical. Tip number 24, look styled and well-kept. Your nails, your hair, subtle jewelry. Um, And tip number 25, this is one of my peeves, is perfume. Wear a minimal amount of perfume or really none at all. Uh, There's a lot of people that have reactions to perfumes. If you're going to be sitting on an airplane, you don't want to have to smell someone else. I just don't think perfume is a necessity. So that's secret number one. We've given you two techniques and we've given you some appearance tips and physical presentation. That's the first and the biggest impression of the secrets. So secret number two, let's go on to that. Your verbal presentation. Articulate, as my mother would say. 
your verbal presentation it is um, as simple as effectively communicating because it's critical to the way you're perceived by others. It's often the second biggest impression that you make. When others hear you, what are they hearing? Are they hearing, you know, sometimes I, sometimes I kind of break into my Missouri accent, but I do it for humor. <laughs> <laughs> I still try to use good grammar, but I, I sometimes in my written, which we'll talk about last, my grammar is, I believe, impeccable. If you have um, the tendency to rattle on, if you have a tendency not to be succinct, if you have a tendency not to make a point, step back and listen to yourself with your communication. So in the verbal communication, we're going to give you um, some scenarios, three different scenarios, just how verbal comes out in these three scenarios to think of. And then we'll give you uh, three language tips because Lord knows there's a books and books of them, but we'll give you three specific ones and we'll give you four quick tips on public speaking. Okay, so put your seatbelt on because we're going to run through this. Here's the th- first one, three language skills. Um, one thing to listen for, ladies, do you use conditionals? A woman that says, I'd like us to go forward with this project by tomorrow afternoon. Sounds different than, hmm, I'm thinking that it might be a good idea to maybe do this project tomorrow afternoon. Can we get started on it then? What do you guys think? All right, now the second one might sound very accommodating, but listen to the difference in impact and power. The second woman does not sound as confident in the direction she's going. I'm not saying blow over people. I'm saying be careful when you use maybe, sometimes, I don't know, could be, could, would, maybe, should, those sort of words. That's your first quick language tip. Listen to yourself. The second one, simplify your language. Instead of using a long drawn out discussion of, Carol, you know, we have meetings every Monday and I thought I'd made the meetings, the staff meetings, I thought I'd made them uh, mandatory. And I've noticed three out of the last four you've missed. So what's going on? All right, sounds fine but listen to the difference when I laser it. I'm going to use 12 words or less. Carol, Monday morning meetings aren't optional. Please be there. And I can do that with a tone that doesn't sound like I'm a bully, but Carol's going to walk away, especially if she's an employee of mine and I need her to get the message. She's going to walk away and remember meetings aren't optional. Meetings aren't optional. That sticks in your mind versus a diatribe that's little bit longer okay the third language skill I love this one my husband taught it to me it's called the statement question technique and it's a great way of getting communication going two ways the classic one is this for statement question Um, let's talk about where we're gonna have dinner tonight honey Um, what do you want to do oh I don't care what do you want to do well you want to go down to Chili's Oh, okay. I don't really mind chilies, but can we think of something better? Right, blah, 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 right? We've all been to this conversation. Instead, honey, I'd like to have steak for dinner tonight. What would you like? Now, the statement was, I would like to have steak tonight for dinner. The follow-on question, what would you like? Listen to what this does. Now, this is a simple example because we're just talking about dinner but this could be anything in a work environment or or personal environment i have stated in one simple statement where i am all right i'm not opening it up i'm not saying it's good or bad i'm just saying this is what i want and then i'm following up with a question and what's the question do it opens up the dialogue. So now I'm letting the other person know i'm open to what you might think. When you've got a, an interaction that you want to make sure the other person hears your point of view, but you're also bringing them in, consider this. Okay. Okay. So those are your three tips, three speaking tips. La, la, la. Language skills, conditionals, lasering it, and the statement question. Okay. That's speaking to individuals. Now, the other situation, speaking to small groups, and we're going to talk about speaking to large groups, speaking to small groups. 
Here's another tip from the book. Volunteer to be a conference speaker. You will be surprised at how it strengthens your business acuity. If you're concerned about your professional image, here is a great way to lean into it. Find yourself someplace that you can talk. Maybe it's, you know, one that's, find one that's not so intimidating. Uh, Maybe it's a lunch and learn. Maybe it's a small conference. Maybe it's an association of women that you love. And maybe it's Femfessionals. Speak at one of your Femfessionals. Um, Just asking time at a staff meeting and then prepare some sort of talk and deliver it. And your preparation for that doesn't need to look anything more like here's what I know and here's what I'm sharing. Now, to make yourself do this, if this is one of those things you're like, oh, you're saying to yourself, oh, I really should do that. Oh, that would be great for me. I would love to have more exposure that way. Small groups, great idea, Katie. I'm going to teach you something called a forcing function. Carol and I use this all the time. Katie uses it on Carol. Katie uses it on Carol. (laughs) Put something in a calendar. Commit to it. If, um, for example, I know I've got to make an appointment with a client right now, and and I'm kind of dragging my feet on it because I don't know what I don't know what the appointment's going to look like. All I know is I need to do it. I'm not going to wait until I'm ready to know what to say. I'm going to force myself right now to call them and say, I need to meet you in the next month. Can we set a time? And then I get it on the calendar. And now, now I'm going to have to find out what I'm going to say, right? (laughs) I'm going to have to be prepared. But the energy becomes there. The energy just springs forth when you've got it on your calendar. And now you know it. When you can force yourself to do something, put it on your schedule, that leads you to presenting yourself. Now, that gives you an opportunity to be more present in um, public situations. To practice your verbals, and we're talking about your verbal skills here. Tip number seven, hire or find a coach or a close friend to get feedback from after a public appearance or someone who can be honest and encouraging with you. It's a great idea. If you are going to do any sort of speaking, either in small groups or large groups, ask someone for an opinion. How did I do? I'm ready. I'm ready for the, the tough words and give, you know, be nice, but also give me the, the lowdown. Let's talk about public speaking. Those of you that do talk in big groups, you know that it can sometimes be disarming. (laughs) It can sometimes be embarrassing. First time I met Carol, I was speaking to an association group and she was in it. And I had my skirt caught in my pantyhose. (laughs) A true story. True, but she remembers it more than I do. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Well, you got me before I walked up and then... Walked up in front of the entire group. So it wasn't, you know, and it wasn't like my entire ass was showing or anything, but, but I have had family members that have had that situation. That's another story for another time walking through a public airport. But let's talk about public speaking for you right now. When you do it more, it does get easier. Are you petrified of it or do you have situations where you've got to be doing it? Your professional appearance has got to come off as powerful. You want yourself to know. So there are some things to remember, looking composed. Here are four delivery tips, easy, quick, tiny trainings, big results, four tips in public speaking. First one, stand still. Those of you that are fidgety, and I am a fidgeter, might tend to pace back and forth like a caged animal on the stage. (laughs) If you do that, that can be very distracting. A little bit of movement actually looks good. Take a few paces. Stand, continue to talk, take a few paces. Couple of gestures. Find two gestures that look natural for you. And it, they do need to look natural so that it doesn't look like you're doing a um, something that's more you know scripted and practiced. What is it a ge- what is a gesture that might look fine for you that's not um, flapping your arms like crazy airplane wings or, or moving around in a distractive way, but something that just looks like you're comfortable. If you have no gestures and you stand there with your arms uncomfortably at your side, you look a little feeble. You look like you're not comfortable. Practice a couple of gestures that work well for you. Use short sentences, period. <laughs> <laughs> That's This is where it crosses over into the verbal power, the lasering technique that we just practiced, intersperse your delivery with something that the listener can easily grasp. 
tiny trainings, big results. That's an example. And then last of all of the four public speaking tips, watch your tone and your speed. Use some pauses here and there. Modulate your tone. If you've got the type of voice that just keeps doing this and it doesn't really veer anyway, you might need to adjust that occasionally. And I do coach individuals when they're speaking, listen to the way and we'll record them. You know, how you sound, are you being monotone or are you modulating it just a little bit? It makes it a little bit more interesting to have some up and down here and there. Those four tips are also uh, online in um, the blog. We have a blog at Skirt Strategies called the Happy Hour Blog. And um, there are some written. We actually have three blogs at Skirt Strategies for your reference. This is a great resource. The written blog, we have the video blog, which is called the Hot Flash Video. And those are video trainings. And then we have our podcast. Podcast has its own tab at Skirt Strategies. We're up to maybe 60 60 or 65 mm -hmm. podcasts. You can also get those on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Listen to a 30-minute, you know, somewhere between a 20 and a 30-minute um, podcast, which is a tip for, for women who want to be influential. Good plug, because it's a great podcast. That's all free. All that stuff is free. All right, secret number two. So that was your verbal presentation. We've talked about some language skills for speaking with individuals and small audiences and uh Big speaking audiences may public speaking more like, and we gave you some tips there, four tips. Let's go on to the last of the three. So physical presentation, verbal presentation, and the third secret confident women know, written presentation. This is a tough one because for many of us, it has to do with how you've been educated or what your English teacher taught you. But there are some keys in um, being you know, astute with your English language. In France, they're very, very fussy about keeping track of their language, and they don't like um, colloquialisms. They don't like their language to veer. Well, we in America kind of let things veer quite quickly. We have urban dictionaries. Mm -hmm. But it is simple. If you think about it in this way, the way you present yourself on paper, and, and now it's mostly on the web. That's the third most important impression you make as a powerful professional woman. I love Jodi Picoult. I love her her books. This is from her book, Salem Falls. I did not read Salem Falls. Did you? I did not. I don't Here, know how we knew this. <laughs> I don't know. You, you came up with this. I did find you this. You brought this quote. I love it. Words are like eggs dropped from great heights. You can no more call them back than ignore the mess they leave when they fall. <laughs> <laughs> you can't unsay something. Yeah. And you can't unemail anything now. Uh, yeah, and you can't unsee something like if you see someone in their <laughs> underwear, you can't unsee that. <laughs> I don't know when that happens, but um, email etiquette. There is a f bit of a tip here. I've got I've got a few things along the lines of grammar. As I said, with with grammar and the written word, there is a lot. Email etiquette is one of those areas that if you're um, prone to using broken English right? Misleading um, dialogue, uh, words that just don't work uh, in your in your emails. It sends a message around your ability to persuade powerfully. The message here for you is to be careful about that. All right, how you go about being careful? Well, there's some tips you can use. We have an email. We actually have an ebook on email etiquette, and this came out of that. <clears throat> if it, if it, you know, if I had to give you some grammar, I'd say, well, you know, I can, I can proofread some of your emails and tell you whether you've got a professional image and aura or not. But for you to know them would be really important as well. Be concise and to the point. <clears throat> Avoid long sentences. Eliminate unnecessary words. Um, use formatting that makes the text easy to read, including smaller paragraphs. All caps, of course, is yelling. <laughs> That's right. The Donald Trump. Stop yelling at me. Stop yelling. Take time to proof your message. That's probably an easy one that you can do right away. Use spell check. Have your spell check on. I think maybe the default is spell check is on, but for a it while is. you actually had to turn it on. Because emails can be easily misinterpreted, the use of expressions or emoticons actually can be helpful as um, long as the email is not a formal one. I wouldn't use emoticons in, an, in a formal email, but I have I've seen people at powerful levels, use emoticons to help express 
a sentiment and it's it's actually really very useful to set the tone. Let me get a little water here. Katie's used to talking a lot anyway, but it's probably good. So in this written, we're going to get here's some some tips with email etiquette. And by the way, um, here's a a a flash freebie. Carol, I'm going to do a flash freebie off the spur of the moment. Oh my god! We have an email etiquette book. It's I think it's 38 pages. It's a PDF. We sell it on our website, but I will email it to you for free if you send me an email that says I want that ebook. Send it to Katie at Skirt Strategies. Yes. Katie at skirtstrategies.com and I'll send it to you. It's a um um a nice approach to tuning up your email etiquette and how to get your office, especially if you want to set some standards for your office. <clears throat> so I I can't remember what we sell that for. I think it's somewhere around the twenty, twenty seven dollar range. But I will send that to you for free because you're here with me live. And so if you listen to this on recording, you might get it too. <laughs> if you send Katie a, an email it, asking her for anything, she'll give it to you. Did you just say that? Uh, maybe that <laughs> maybe that wasn't completely Actually, true. We we believe in karma. We're pretty good about putting things back into the universe because it comes back to us. So we do give away a lot. I'm yes. okay with that. Um I I just want to mention to everybody that yes, this uh webinar is being recorded. And yes, we are going to send it out. And actually, the recording will have the first uh, 10 minutes of slides that you all missed. So okay, don't miss that. I think Lorraine had asked that. Thank you. And Caitlin, you mentioned great tips. Thank you for that promo. And I see Celeste is is participating as well. And there's a ton of people online. I appreciate that. Don't hesitate to jump in. We're trying to keep up with um, slides and your feedback at the same time. Neosha asked, um, can you give a few more examples of general gestures while speaking? Mm. And um, I'm, I just want to say that sometimes you can make big gestures. You can, you can be that bigger person on stage. I just went to a TED Talk where a woman just, she was the big person on stage. She made huge gestures and she did it really well, but you could tell she had some acting background. Okay. So you can do that. Um, go ahead. Okay. Another general gesture. Good general gesture. It. I I did not go into depth there because this is one of those um, training areas that it's best to see you in person, right? But I can describe if you think about what um, Clinton, you know, Clinton had that his thumb and his on the top of his fist. Mm. You know, am I describing it right? And he put it out in front of his fist in front of him, but it wasn't a fist; it wasn't a point. He'd use his thumb on top of his fist, you know. Uh, and that became a gesture that was known for him, but it was comfortable for him. And even though it was tied to his persona, that's fine. A lot of people started using it afterwards. It was one that was comfortable and it wasn't uh, intimidating because he wasn't pointing. So he still got someone's attention by using the hand. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about. Um, I will, when I'm speaking publicly, I will have my hands out in front of me kind of like a... Um, like I'm carrying something, so I'm trying to describe it. You know, I kind of do this. Right. I'll say, you know, we, so, so here's, here's where I'm coming from when I describe blah, blah, blah. And I'll have my hands out in front of me as if I've got, a, let's say, a tray. Visualize me holding a tray. It looks like that. That's comfortable for me. Um, I try not to, if you use too many, it becomes... I think it just becomes distracting. If you use too many big gestures too often, it becomes distracting. If it looks comfortable for you, it's probably not. So the woman that you mentioned, if it looks good for her and she could wear it well, go for it. Go for it. Okay. So email etiquette. All right, let's go on. Um, some simple tips. A tip number 10 from the book, publish something. This is the last part of that written area, which is publishing something. Tip number 10, publish something, even if it's a small article in the company newsletter, or maybe in your association newsletter, include a picture of yourself. It will build your credibility as a leader. Now, this is a great opportunity to be seen as an authority in a relatively easy way. All right. You may want to have someone um, review what you write. You may be thinking, Katie, I don't have anything to write about. I, I'll bet I could talk to you for 10 minutes 
and find out what you do and what you're good at and what might be something unique that you know, and you can write it. It's akin to, we talk about TED Talks, and I'll, I'll be giving a TED Talk in October. I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have a, a link sooner or later that we can put on the website. There are videos that help you prepare for a TED Talk, the same sort of content pulling stuff that you do for a TED Talk, because a TED Talk is not a diatribe. It's not a monologue. It's really a, here's my story. It's your, it's your big idea. It's here's, here's what I've learned or something that you've transformed. And all of us have a story. We do. The story goes on. Other thoughts for being out there? Oh, we were in a blog yesterday. That I was saw that. Dar- you were so good. Lean. Oh, my God. Darling, I think it's called uh, More Than Turquoise. More Than Turquoise, Jamie yeah. Lewinger. And she um, reviewed our book, a different book. We have uh, another book called Brave Transitions that came out recently. It's for managing change for women, Brave Transitions. And she reviewed it, and it was the most adorable. It's, uh, I think the link is on our Um, Facebook page if you want to find skirt strategies on our Facebook page but she had visuals this is one of the visuals that she had she showed pictures of herself sitting in various places reading our book she showed she showed herself cracking up she said this book is a crack up I love it I hate reading but I loved reading this book and then she showed herself laughing it was a really cute blog that's a great way to gain credibility and professional power be in other people's blogs be in the newsletter um, an editorial, the business section of most editorial of most newspapers um, love hearing from the local business folks. And I contributed to one a few years ago, how to go from being a techie to a leader and they published it and everyone's like, oh my God, you're in the paper. It's really not that hard to do. Um, or write a book. It's really not that hard to do. Or write <laughs> an ebook and everyone says, Katie, it's not, it's not that easy. Well, sooner or later. You live long enough, you have things to write about. Here's how Katie does it. She she publishes something that says, our new book is going to come out such and such a time. And that's the forcing <laughs> function that makes that book come out at that time. I'm like, so. now I really got to finish it because I told people. Yeah. That's how I hold myself accountable. It works really well. So the last of those was the written presentation. It's what may leave a lasting impression. So review how you're represented through publications and emails. Um, are you out there? Can you be more out there? And that's Google what? yourself. Google. Find it. out. Yeah. Sometimes I'm scared to Google myself, but no fear, people. No fear. <laughs> so we've covered your physical presentation, your verbal presentation, and your written presentation. All three of those. Consider your powerful image as being a combination, not just how people see you, but also how they hear you and how they see you in writing occasionally set a forcing function for yourself to check up on where you are um, in any of those three areas. Come back to the tips. Maybe find something in, if you've got skirt strategies, find something in there. Remember that your personal brand is absolutely the most critical step forward in any woman's career. Defining and refining your image and persona is a must do for any woman that wants to make herself stand out wants to be confident and poised professional. And this is something, you being, being in this industry, this is something that you do for the rest of your life. And the older you get, the better you get at it. And the older you get, the more aware you get at it. And the older you get, the more you realize you've got to set these forcing functions for yourself. You've got to be um, setting aside some time. That's why we love tiny trainings because people say, oh, you know, I can't do it. I can't, I can't go get an MBA or I can't do an entire class. And quickly you can, you can do it in these small, tiny bits because those raise your awareness. Okay. So the obvious questions now, can you do this? Is this something that you think is comfortable for you? Do you want help holding yourself accountable? Do you want to go a little bit further with this? Is there a level of your professionalism that's so critical to your success that you want to commit to more? Do you want to jump in and do more? And if you're at that point, then Carol and I invite you to join us. We're going to have an online workshop that takes us into this just a little bit more. You have the ability to refine these over and over again. And um, this workshop that we call your personal brand, we have designed this 
just for women like femfessionals that are in situations where they want to have their image polished. They want to be more powerful. They want to know what others think of them. They want to have what I call a personal brand. This is not a business brand. This is what Carol and I call a personal brand, refining the you that projects confidence. And so we have put together an online course of uh, four sessions, four online sessions. It's going to start September 30th. It includes uh, self-assessments. It will include unlimited email support from me. It'll be mostly me delivering it. Carol will be in the background, but you'll see mostly me. You'll have further skills to try like what you've seen here. And um, it includes, um, God, I love this. It includes your personal bio. Carol, I call this our, your drab to fab bio. Um, when, if you're the type of person that uses a small narrative of, you know, Katie Snap came from 30 years of engineering experience. It wasn't 30, by the way. And, um, and has done this and this, this, these bios that are blah, blah, blah. Boring bios. We're going to rewrite that. We're going to show you how to rewrite that. Look at our bios on the website. And mm. you can also look at the Drab to Fab tab. And it uh, it shows my bio before and my bio after. So Oh, and it went from it went from completely drab blah, 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 to blah, blah. something so human that showed Carol as a person. And uh, <laughs> we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to show you how to do, now this is just fun. Some people use this and some don't, but a 30 second commercial that helps you define what your um, image is. We'll practice. We mentioned Olivia Fox Cobain's um, charisma myth. We're going to practice her tips. She's got three areas for improving charisma. And um, we'll look at female power and influence. Where's yours? You'll get a little assessment. You'll you'll rate yourself on that. You'll have some, um, whatever works for you for affirming it, whether it's an affirmation practice, whether it's meditation, whether it's time alone, um, what's going to work for you for in, improving your composure and your confidence. And then we'll have you set personal goals. And this small band of women that are going to be in this training will we'll share that with one another. So we'll hold each other accountable. And that starts on Wednesday, September 30th. It's going to be one hour online starting, and it, it'll be at 11 o'clock West Coast, 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll have the second session on October 7th, then the 14th, and then the 21st. So we invite you to come do that. Um, that will be refining, really drilling down into what you've heard today that you want to make happen. If You want to hold yourself accountable for it. If you can't make any of those sessions, they will be recorded and available, and you will have assignments that won't be time consuming. You'll still get the assignments, and you'll be able to hear the debrief afterwards in the in the audio. So you won't be missing something if if you have to miss um, one or more of those. We put this at a rate that we thought would be um, special for femfessionals because um, femfessionals was so kind to share your attention with us. Uh, we wanted to give it to you for something that was manageable. So we're offering it to you for $245, which is. You will not get this anywhere else. Just think about. <laughs> Look at this and and I got to tell you, you know, I have, I use my bio all the time now and I was kind of uh, embarrassed to use it before. Now I use it in everything I do. I'm very proud of, of what it says. I'm very proud of um, everything about it. One thing, one thing that you are going to have to do is go out and get a really uh, professionally done photograph because I think that makes a huge difference too. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, it depends yeah. on on what your working world is. Many of you are um, small business owners. Many of you are buried in larger corporate environments. Whatever it is, you still want to make an impression because you're here. You're in the right place. This You're here because you show the intent and the um, forward thinking, you're leaning into it. And this is your opportunity to keep leaning if you would like to. So if you want to do that in, in installments of uh, 135, that's fine too. You save a little bit of money um, doing it all at once. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is an important part. There is a complete money back guarantee for 30 days. If and for 30 days, if, if you get into this and you're like, I cannot stand this, Katie, it is not for me, no questions asked. We don't want anyone that's not happy. You will get a refund lickety split, not a problem. So the website to go to is skirtstrategies.com forward slash image. Skirtstrategies.com 
image. And you'll find there, um, I've also offered many women like getting onto something really pretty quick. They're like, you know, I've got my momentum going. I've got my mojo happening. I want to talk to you now. I want to get this going. There's a coaching pack. You can add on the coaching pack with one-on-one coaching for me. I am a, a certified ICF. I have over 400 hours of coaching. I know what I'm doing. And coach, I'll tell you, I have my own coach. Professionals use coaches because you need that outside um, that outside feedback yes. on how you're doing and you need to talk through things in such a way that's encouraging. Katie's a fabulous coach. So the coaching three pack is uh, three one-on-ones with me over the phone. If you're, if you happen to be in the Southwest or somewhere that I'm traveling, I'm, I'm, I was going to say I'm pleased to do it face to face, but this is actually the online or the over the phone um, rate, which is much more affordable. So three sessions of, a half an hour, so 90 minutes total for 225. And you can break that up however you would like. If you would like to do three quickies, half an hour, then let's do that. Let's talk about your bio. Let's talk about where you're stuck. One of my um, clients in the past, I love this quote. I had to I had to share it with you. She said, some of my most fulfilling and rewarding moments were coaching sessions with you. They gave me clarity when I needed it the most. Thanks again. And um, she retired shortly after that. But she, when she left, she reached out to me and said, I just wanted to let you know that I'm retiring and this is what I remember the most. So that coaching three-pack, you know, if you want to do that alone without the um, class, I, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you want to get on that, that's perfectly fine with me. It's not a requirement to have the... Um, the workshop, the four sessions of the workshop. Both of those are available at skirtstrategies.com slash image. And I think um, I think that might be it. Do we want to take some questions from, oh, we want to give away a book. Yeah. So Carol, you have pulled out a name from a hat based on people that have um, registered at GoToWebinar. I have. Who is our lucky winner? Christina Brischler. Christina. Christina, congratulations. Brist- What's her last name? Brischler? Are we- B-R-I-S-C-H-L-E-R. Awesome. Christina, um, I will reach out to you after this and get your mailing address and we will mail you a copy of Skirt Strategies, um, the book, 249 Success Tips for Women in Leadership. Um, there are, by the way, I ought to mention this only because of the timing. Yesterday we started a, um, uh, a promo on Kindle. So if you're a Kindle person, our most recent book, which is Brave Transitions, A Woman's Guide for Managing Composure Through Changes in Work and Life is 99 cents at, at, uh, Kindle. It, I'm only mentioning that because it just is going to be yesterday through, I think it's a week. Well, and we have a webinar coming up. So look at our website. It has to do with uh, your money story. Keep an eye out for that as well. And uh, we have certainly enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, Are there other questions we want to grab from people? Carol, you can see that, that I'm pleased to answer. Um, Type them in and we're going to try to, you can probably um, maximize that too, Carol, so that we can. Can you give me more examples of the statement question technique? Uh, I think that's minimizing. I was thinking maybe we could put it on a full screen. Um, The minimizing technique? Statement question technique. Oh, the statement question technique. More examples. Oh, so give me a business example of the statement question technique. Okay. Um, Were you about to say something? No, go ahead. Okay. Let's say that, um, let's say that I'm in a meeting or with a group and, um, I have a specific opinion on something like, I think we should go this direction with the new project. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm thinking in my head, oh, this group kind of sounds like they're going a different way and I don't want to be controlling, but I definitely want my opinion considered. Maybe it's one person you're talking to and maybe it's a group. I might say, you know, with this new product, um, I'd like to see us do this, this, and this period. You leave it at that. Then you, that's the statement. So you're firm on here's what I think. Mm -hmm. Then you followed up with what are some of the other areas that you all think are direction we could go? Nice. Okay. Yeah. You've given, you've given your opinion airtime 
nicely, legitimately, and kind of a flat out statement there. So that's a great example. If you're um, in a scenario where you feel that you're going to get pushback, it's a perfect um, time to use it. If it's one where you're not sure the other person will give you their opinion, like maybe they're passive aggressive-ish. Oh, yeah. Or they often don't say what they think. You state what you think, statement, and then you clearly ask them for theirs. It's nice. a great, it is a great technique. I tell you, using it with, at home with my husband. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he, and he is a master at it. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. But I can see, I can see so many applications in the workplace too. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's, and I think it's great because sometimes we don't get our opinions out there as women. We kind of let other people throw their opinions on the table and then, and then we're stuck with them. Well, Carol, you're in a perfect situation of a person of authority because you've got um, your your full time job is a membership association. You're right. the executive director of a restaurant association, the statewide, and you've got a board that you're accountable to. So I can visualize Carol sitting in a board meeting, and she's kind of you've got to rein this group in, right? Well, yeah, you've got to listen to their opinions, and then and then somebody has to wrap it up too. And actually, you have a, a great technique on on wrapping up. Uh, thoughts that are going around a room. Oh, yeah. I call that the, um, I call it my brain is dead uh, technique. <laughs> it's not the brain is dead technique. It's, um, it's, uh, uh, I'll think of it. In a call minute. it wrap up for, but for I'll now. call it for wrap up. But it's, yeah. you use a statement that brings, it's a meeting mover. It's called a meeting mover. Mm. So a meeting mover, it, kind of like a, a statement question, but doesn't have to be in that form is drawing attention to something that you heard and um, calling it out to the group. For example, if a group is beating a dead horse, you know, we've all been As in those situations. do, yes. Any one person, this is, a per- this is a powerful person. You don't have to be the person in charge, but any one person around the table can say, you know, I've heard us say several things so far and it sounds like we're not getting any further how about we put this in the parking lot? Nice. So that's that's a meeting mover. You're listening to what's happening in the dynamic and you're stating it and then you're getting the meeting to move forward. That's a great list. In fact, I ought to write a blog on that one because I've got it. Um, we, we could even do a podcast on that one. We could. Other, so other let's, uh, I don't think we have any other questions. Please, if you have questions, do um, write them in. Are we at time? We're at time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure that um, if you're listening to this afterwards, for those of you that aren't on live, you missed out because we had a lot of fun and I can feel the energy. I can feel the love. The um, offer for the the workshop, I'll send you all a reminder, but that workshop is uh, going to fill up and it's skirtstrategies.com slash image. Um, If if you're even slightly thinking about it, it's... um, worthwhile effort and i've got on here i really only have the the coaching price but if you go to skirtstrategies.com it also includes the here oops it also includes the um the cost of the session itself you want to go back to that okay and well let's just leave it at that and um for those of you there it is right there the dates and 245 you know, you can get me or Carol, Katie at skirtstrategies.com, Carol at skirtstrategies.com. We gave away a book. I will make sure that it gets sent to Christina. And I'm excited. Please reach out and know that we're here for you. This is what Carol and I love to do. And we're a huge resource for you. So hopefully we'll see you all more. And hopefully we'll see you in the, um, in the workshop, the online workshop. Thanks. Bye, ladies.